podcast first, sponsored by Natax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. We have finally got some advertised sunshine in here and now having a nice sunset here. The sunset's uh, happening moments ago. Look at that fiery sky off to the west here in our Champagne weather camera. Uh, we'll see more sunshine coming into tomorrow across the region. I do expect tonight under a mostly clear sky, temperatures dropping down into the 20s out there. 25, we'll call it clear and cold. That's actually where we should be this time of year, though, with light west winds 2 to 7 miles an hour. Tomorrow, then, should be start to finish. Lots of sunshine, a nice blue sky. Been a while since we've seen that, right? Getting up into the low 50s out there, we'll encourage you to get outside as much as you can because things in the future not looking all that great. While we do have lots of Saturday sunshine, the chance is there for some snow flurries into Sunday night and a big cold blast is on the way for all. We'll talk about all of that and more later on in the show. WCIA 3 News at 5 starts right now. Now on WCIA 3 News. I've been here since 9 yesterday morning. It's Black Friday. What some shoppers waited in line for all night to buy and how they're adapting to the changes in stores because of the pandemic. Plus, if you plan on buying Christmas gifts this weekend, there are precautions you should take. What health professionals want you to know before you hit the stores. And COVID-19 cases continue to rise while one central Illinois blood center is reaching out to people who have recovered for help. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 5. I got here about 3.30 a.m. And it was, we already had like 20 people in front of me. It's a big shopping day for retailers, Black Friday, and shoppers are adapting to the changes from the pandemic. Good evening, I'm Jamie Mays. Despite a much different shopping experience, some people went above and beyond to get the most wanted items. WCIA 3's Karina Rubio was there as people lined up outside some champagne stores. 2020 has come with a lot of uncertainty for business owners, but there's one thing some of them could count on, a line of people outside their doors on Black Friday morning. Uh, this is our first year going hard at it, just trying to get as much stuff as we can. Best Buy shoppers braved the cold to get in at 5 a.m., but they had a musical food truck keeping them motivated, moving, and well-fed. Customers shuffled in 25 at a time for safety protocol. Now, the number one thing everybody was looking for today was a PlayStation 5, but not an easy task to get your hands on one. People took their chances at GameStop, too. They only let people in five at a time. I got here at 8.30 yesterday morning. <laughs> I got here Wednesday <laughs> at about 8 p.m. We had a tent. Um, her and I had a tent, and then uh, we had a little heater in there and blankets and coolers and food. And they have two. Uh, PlayStations and they have eight Xbox. Oh. So, and these are like the hottest items of the year. Everybody sells out online super quick. So, if you got kids, this is what they want. And I've got a 15 year old at home, and this is what he wants. <laughs> All of Christina Pryor's hard work was well worth it. She walked out of that store, PlayStation 5 in hand. Others weren't so lucky and had a hop out of line after hours in the cold. I got here about 3 30 a.m. And it was, we already had like 20 people in front of me, so I was just waiting. Oh, it, it's honestly painful because everyone else was sitting and I stood there for like three hours. In Champaign, Karina Rubio, WCIA 3, your local news leader. And if the rush of Black Friday shopping isn't for you, don't forget about Cyber Monday. Health officials are reminding people to be cautious if they're shopping this weekend. COVID-19 cases are still rising. To prevent the spread, health officials are reminding people to follow capacity limits in stores, social distance, and wear masks. If possible, shop online. The deputy administrator and epidemiologist for the Champaign-Urbana Public Health District says the safest way to protect you and your family is to shop online. Shopping online is probably the safest right now because you don't have to leave your home and whatever you need is available to you exactly what is in store and at the same price as well. So that would be the best option. He says some hospitals are overwhelmed with cases, so be careful when going outside and shopping at stores. And a man in Charleston is facing several charges after police say he battered his child's mother. It happened near Grant Avenue and 9th Street. It was reported that the teenager grabbed his two-week-old child from another house member, punched the child's mother, then ran away carrying his underdressed baby. 19-year-old Malcolm Hoskins was arrested. It was also reported Hoskins had a back 
backpack carrying a pipe and a container with methamphetamine. Hoskins was taken to the Coles County Jail. The baby was returned to the mother. And troopers responded to a deadly crash in Macon County. It happened on Illinois Route 121, just south of McDonald Road. It was reported that a 50-year-old named Richard Brown, was from, who was from Clinton, was driving north on Route 121. When his car crossed the center line, he hit another car head on. The driver in the other car died in that crash. A woman was taken to the hospital. Brown was given citations for improper lane usage and driving under the influence of alcohol. Westville police are looking for help in identifying a suspect. Officers said the suspect is involved in a burglary investigation. They are asking anyone with information to call police. And one of the most accessible treatments for COVID can be found in the people who have already lived through it. Blood blanks across the state are running out of plasma supplies, and plasma from COVID survivors is a top priority. WCIA3's Cole Hankey is live in Springfield. Cole, how does donating plasma help? Recovered from COVID, their plasma then has their COVID antibodies in it. So when current patients are being treated, they want their plasma so then they can help fight off the COVID symptoms. The plasma they are looking for is called convalescent plasma, and the process for getting it is the same as donating regular plasma. Christy White had COVID over the summer and has already donated plasma once. She was scared originally, but she said the process wasn't nearly as bad as she was expecting. I have to do this because, you know, just having that first-hand account through somebody that you know um, really made it impactful. So if I can help, you know, a few people, one person, you know, that could be my dad in the hospital. The formal name for this treatment is convalescent plasma therapy. It was the first way medical professionals thought of to try and treat COVID. And medical professionals from the SIU School of Medicine say that Donating plasma after having COVID does not have any negative effects on the donor other than, you know, maybe feeling the normal uh, after effects of donating blood. Jamie. All right. Thanks, Cole. And blood banks across also need normal blood donations. Their supplies of O negative and O positive blood are down to just three days. The country is in the middle of a blood shortage since mobile blood drives are getting shut down because of COVID. While health officials are expecting a surge of cases over the next few weeks because of the holiday, the number of new cases is down today. More than 7,500 cases were announced. Compare that to yesterday's more than 12,000. The positivity rate did go up slightly to 12.2 percent. More than 5,800 people are in the hospital, with more than 1,200 in the ICU and 698 on ventilators. 66 more people have died, including four in central Illinois. More than 12,000 people have died so far. The Capitol building will not be putting up their usual holiday displays this year. Normally, the Capitol Rotunda would be decked out in holiday symbols from all regions and practices, but because of COVID, that is not happening this year. A spokesman for the Secretary of State's office said in a statement, due to the fact that the Capitol was closed because of COVID-19 pandemic, we decided not to put up temporary displays in the Rotunda this year. We notified the organizations that had submitted special event forms of this decision. We look forward to working with them again in 2021. And two organizations are teaming up for a fundraiser that honors and recognizes heroes in their hometowns. The Prairie Lands Council, Boy Scouts, and Eastern Illinois Food Bank are hosting a popcorn sale. You can order it, have it shipped to your home, or donate it to a hero of your choice. One Scout executive says they want it to show essential workers they care. You can ship it to them. Or we, you can purchase it and we'll donate it for you. We'll give it to local hometown heroes. They can be your first responders, uh, you know, police officers, uh, nurses, doctors, mm -hmm. uh, firemen, or even your military professionals. Because, of course, having Veterans Month, uh, Veterans Day during November. They are accepting orders until the 29th. Coming up, there will be big changes in leadership in Washington. Because we know there was massive fraud. Why President Trump says it's going to be very hard to concede and what he's waiting on before he leaves the White House. And Jacob, we got a little sunshine today in some spots. What can we expect this weekend? Yeah, we're going to get more of it tomorrow, thankfully, out there. Yes. Uh, a lot of sunshine, in fact. We look at our satellite and radar right now. You can see some of the clouds clearing out in its wake tomorrow. That means a beautiful sunshine day ahead. It won't last long, though. 
Bit of a change in the weather as we head to Sunday, especially Monday and Tuesday. We'll tell you what we're expecting coming up after this.